This is Alex with MasterChatsTrading.com. This is Market Recap for Friday, February 2nd, 2018. Uh, very brief thing about the future. It is always penciled in. It is always unknowable. So probably the best thing to do is try not to worry about it too much. But in terms of in the context of trading, we can concentrate on the chart. Um, for example, here is a chart of Bitcoin. And people have been sort of obsessed about this thing. Um, to me, it's just an instrument. Uh, it's an instrument that can be traded up or it's an instrument that can be traded down. Uh, now there are Bitcoin futures and they can be traded in the downside. So in other words, the short sellers come in and say that we no longer want such elevated prices. Uh, besides the point, um, what I was trying to say is that the future is unknowable we should be very flexible and open-minded. Uh, stocks are overbought, uh, but no one knows when the correction will end. Um, so we'll look at all the normal stuff like stocks, bonds. Uh, bonds really worry me off late. Um, dollar, probably overdue for a bounce. Gold-related assets are also overdue for a pullback. Look at crypto, uh, oil, and natural gas. Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChatsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, February 2nd, 2018. Uh, we will have a pretty straightforward video as, you know, usually we'll have uh, coverage of stocks, um, uh, bonds, excuse me, uh, stocks, bonds, uh, dollar, gold related, uh, added the crypto segment uh, and also oil and natural gas at the end. But uh, first I just wanted to very briefly touch upon the uh, future as it is always penciled in and you need to basically open your mind to the possibilities of multiple futures. Um, multiple futures in the context of trading could refer to the actual trading of the futures but it's also more importantly to the multiple outcomes. So for example here's a chart of Bitcoin and Bitcoin uh, has been on everybody's mind for some reason of late, uh, but to me this is just an instrument. Uh, so this instrument can be traded on the upside, see where the green arrows are and uh, blue arrows, those are the good buying points, and currently it's kind of approaching that level where I would say, hmm, maybe we should start selling it. In other words, shorten Bitcoin. In other words, betting on the price of a decline. So the multiple future outcomes in this reference means that we could, we don't know where the price will go. We can only enter an order. And at the very, very, very basic level, we need to decide, are we trading an instrument that you're trading, a stock, bond, gold, anything? Are you going to be buying or selling it? So that's the multiple futures, basically. Right, uh, enough boring psychology of trading and philosophy s p 500 on the daily time frame um finally since uh let me take a look how far back uh as far back as uh september of last year to me that was the last good buying opportunity uh in september of last year uh, myself, I actually have a Dow Jones position still open, and I actually opened about the same time, uh, based on the chart of S&P 500, but the correlations between SPY, Dow Jones, QQQ, IWM, most stock funds, um, and most importantly with junk bonds, which I'll get to later on, are very high. I apologize, there's some noise in the background. Uh, so there is a very high correlation between um, above mentioned instruments that are of lower grade, so to speak, versus high grade government bonds or um, investment grade corporate bonds. Uh, correlation between stock funds are very high. So when one um, index goes, uh, pretty much everybody else follows. So it's, it's all the same thing. Uh, we're seeing a pullback on multiple fronts. So Currently, this is 
I don't see a very big worry sound, you know, sign, except for when we get to junk bonds and the actual, you know, uh, investment grade bonds. Uh, that is what worries me. Um, in, there is a possibility that we are seeing a reversal in the stock market. Um, and I meant reversal here, meaning that the prices will now um, tend to decline. I'm not yet saying that, that it's going to be a bear market. For me to turn bearish on this instrument, which is S&P 500 ETF SPY, currently a price needs to collapse below $238. Um, th that is possible, but is it probable? Um, not very, but there is a there is a risk, and when you're trading, risk is involved. Therefore, you really need to calculate your positions. And I teach um, how to calculate positions and just a general, um, you know, how to uh, wrap your mind around trading. Uh, you can check out my stuff here at masterchefstrading.com. I have a whole bunch of trading sections here. And uh, by the way, some of the subscribers were. Um, finding mistakes in my material. Thank you for pointing them out, and I will fix them as soon as I get to them. It's been a pretty wild few days. So to get back to the stocks, um, basically, yes, we are seeing a correction. I'm actually seeing that we are already oversold, and I would be considering buying here uh, for a bounce higher. So, for example, here's IWM, and I actually already sent an alert to the subscribers. Uh, it's going against us, um, so you have to have a stop somewhere. And usually, reasonable stops, where are the reasonable stops? They measure them based on uh, average through range, and uh, you can find out ATR, average through range, very useful indicator. You can use that uh, to measure uh, where to put the stops. Um, I do it a little bit differently, but in general, uh, it's a good way to measure where to put the stops. Again, I teach all of this stuff at Master Chess Trading. So, um, right now, currently, stocks are oversold. I would be looking to enter on the long side for at least a bounce higher. I don't know how big of a bounce that will happen, but most likely it will happen uh, quite soon. Um, Doing absolutely nothing sometimes is a good thing. So yeah, if you have a drawdown, um, let me see, I, I, I opened IBM uh, recently. So I actually have IBM open uh, right there. And I felt like I got a very good price back on the 17th of January, 2018. Uh, but now I am not as sure. But my stuff is actually quite far off. Um, and my position size, in other words, how many shares am I buying, is reflective of that stop. Um, so let's continue to the various sectors. Here's XLY. Uh, getting to the oversold levels, I would wait a little bit on this one. XLI, industrials. This one is basically good to go to the upside. Um, Here's XLB. Uh, by the way, you can get these indicators at masterchestrading.com. XLB looks good. Um, I would be considering buying it soon. Um, yeah, brief introduction to risk and position size. And yeah, it's a big topic, but like I said, if you sign up, you will uh, get all the access to the uh, videos. And I actually answer questions too, so do send them in. So before we get to bonds, I want to look at utilities. Um, there's a lot of debate of where this is going. Um, I don't like this chart. Uh, this is a bearish chart. It used to be mildly bullish just recently, but this Friday, I don't like this close. See this yellow line there? This, this is my indicators, masterchestrading.com indicators. Uh, close below this yellow line in my book means it's a bearish instrument and I will um, either avoid it or potentially if I really feel like shorting it, potentially short it. And in fact, here's an instrument that 
a couple of shorts could have worked. So here is uh, real estate, IYR. It can be shorted via DRV, I think. Yeah, DRV, so you could do the same thing. But don't analyze the triple leverage ETNs or UNG using my indicators. You have to analyze it using um, the underlying security. So in this case, it's IYR. So look at IYR. Uh, for analysis. <clears throat> Here's IYR in the daily time frame. <clears throat> Up until recently, I thought that we were in a bull market, and uh, but then we had this close on the 12th of January of this year. 12th of January of this year, right there, we had a close below this yellow line. At that point, this changed in my mind, and I thought, I don't like to be buying it, I want to be shorting it, um, I want to be selling it. And where do I want to short it? I want to short it at one of my lines, at the red line. And there you see two arrows where um, you could have opened a short position, uh, for example, on the 24th of January of this year. We can use DRV as an example, on the 24th of January, of this year, you could have opened at 1160, and there's your very nice gain. Um, does that happen often? The shorts, shorting stocks is tricky. IYR is, is basically stocks, even though they're real estate investment trusts. The correlations are very high between the real estate investment trust and the general market. So last time we had the collapse in the real estate, we also had a collapse in the stock market in 2007-8. Not predicting anything of that magnitude just yet, but uh, with the behavior of bonds, we don't really know how the investors will react to higher, <clears throat> higher rates now. So let's look at, uh, again, briefly XLU. So XLU, same thing, utilities. Um, sometimes utilities actually lead the turns in the market and this is a definitely a turn for this very important sector so we will see where this goes um, let's look at junk bonds next apologize so noise in the background uh, junk bonds in a daily time frame again similar chart as I um, just showed the noise that uh, I was already uneasy about the behavior of junk bonds as early as uh, the 19th of January of this year, 2018, or I'm sorry, of December, uh, 19th of December 2017. I was already a little uneasy about the way this is behaving, but then I thought we had a reversal back up but now we definitely don't have a reversal back up. I see a breakdown again below this red line and definitely a bear market um, looking like a bear market to me. So unless, of course, we could see a quick reversal, but this is not looking good. Junk bonds seem to be rolling over to the downside. Correlation again between stocks and junk bonds are high, um, and potentially maybe we're seeing a um, beginning salvos of the bears. Um, but for now, again, I think that stocks are still in the bull market, so we'll see if the uh, junk bonds this time uh, will lead the market lower, or perhaps nothing will happen. Most importantly, TLT, I think, has turned bearish. Um, I don't like this breakdown. I closed my position uh, at the loss. You know that's that's a part of the uh, game of this uh, trading. So you will have losses. You will not have a hundred percent success rate. So get used to it. And psychologically, you need to be able to deal with the non-stop uh, disappointment in the stock market. Uh, again, I teach all of this at MasterChefTrading.com. It takes time to get used to things that you don't like um, if you want to continue to succeed here or at least survive. <clears throat> Anyways, TLT, um, still 
yeah, I'm just gonna stay out of it. Potentially, maybe we can short it uh, if you really if you really feel like it. Um, let me see what I want to cover here. AGG, I think, also very important in PGX. So AGG is a general kind of bond market fund, and this is really not looking good. I actually pulled my money out of the investment grade markets completely in my retirement portfolios. Um, I'm mostly, I'm about half and half cash and stocks right now. And then PGX, that one also, and I, I, I sent to my subscribers um, caution avoid. And uh, so hopefully they cut their exposure. And this is one of those bearish securities also. I would be interested in shorting this if I really felt like shorting it. But I, where I would short it, I would short it at the red line, which is currently at 1462. Possibly if you're very aggressive at 1443. All right, let's continue to Forex overview. Here is dollar on the daily time frame. Uh, These four colored lines uh, can be had by going to masterchesttrading.com and registering there. And then you, I will share these indicators with you. So um, right now the dollar is in a bear market. In other words, I would be looking only to go short. I would not be looking to buy it. Um, <clears throat> and actually the past um, several ideas here was an uh, arrow so you could have shorted another place to short would have been on the 28th of December of last year this particular instrument is not available in the United States but um, it's a good index so we're we're sort of I think we're definitely oversold uh, overdue for a bounce euro let me take a euro um, I think it's tamping out it's it's definitely overdue for a bounce, and I think the green line would be a good place to, uh, again, look for buying opportunities. Um, notice that previous um, alerts or other previous uh, ideas here uh, result in very large gains, 758 pips. British pound versus US dollar, same thing, pulling back from the fresh breakouts um, again previous um, ideas here for example this one would have been just an enormous gain of 1300 pips simply by the indicator line there's no no thinking involved <clears throat> also this can be traded uh, on a uh, smaller time frame here's a one minute chart you can you can do the same thing but you will have a higher um, failure rate because of the intraday charts and generally have much higher failure rates <clears throat> so i stick to the daily charts and the weekly uh, I, I prefer them okay uh us dollar versus japanese yen here is us dollar versus japanese yen several previous alerts also resulted in nice gains notice how we are japanese yen touched this red line uh potentially already could this instrument could be shorted uh, in favor of Japanese yen potentially yeah uh, but then again the dollar is overdue for a little bit of a bounce so we'll see we need to look at the price action um, Canadian dollar US dollar versus Canadian dollar same thing uh, previous alerts or other previous ideas were um, quite successful here is 378 gain a uh, pip gain but notice that we are attempting to bottom here this is a definitely a big sign here we most likely will rebound um in favor of us dollar us dollar mexican peso um same thing basically we have uh, nice places to short this particular instrument um, and basically all of them would have resulted in decent gains uh, just depending on where you put your stops uh, I like to put my stop relatively wide you know above this blue line or sometimes even higher but in Forex it's uh, I, I like to put it on the blue or red lines and um, let me see if there's anything else uh, yes yeah, so uh, stay tuned for gold coverage here's XAU versus USD also known as gold as traded on forex paper gold i guess uh, actually this was an alert sent to my subscribers we are 
were playing it via GLD. Alert was sent here on the 13th of December. Uh, that resulted in a 9% gain on GLD uh, if you exited the top, but the entry was good. Uh, I still have GDX open, probably going to close it. I mean, I, I already sold, I have a quarter of a position riding. Uh, unless we bottom here very quickly, I'm probably going to get rid of it. Um, actually, these two alerts to my subscribers also were su successful if you were, were more nimble. And gold, you got to be nimble with gold. <laughs> Um, overall, I think it's still in an uptrend, but as I said, um, uh, for example, here's GDXJ, which is a junior gold miners, and this one, I uh, this arrow was put there on the 7th of December uh, of last year, so this would have resulted in about 20% gain um, if you were trading it. I was not really trading this one. I'd don't really like this particular instrument, uh, but again, we're approaching this bearish level, so perhaps, perhaps we're going to see a reversal in gold. It's possible. All right, let's continue to commodities. Here's U.S. oil on daily time frame. Uh, this is a uh, CFD. Um, basically, a bullish chart. Uh, this indicator is available to mass chart trading. You can buy on pullbacks towards the green line. Here was an excellent buying opportunity. But now we're a bit overextended. I think we're overdue for a little bit of a deeper pullback. So maybe we will see a, uh, a deeper pullback in oil, maybe towards, yeah, maybe 60, $61 or so. Um, yeah, uh, but that's okay, you know, stock market, uh, there's not that, I mean, there's like 6% of the stock market is oil companies, so if they pull back, the stock market should support overall, um, you know, not a major pullback. Um, Final natural gas, um, just a completely wild action of late. Um, <laughs> This trend change I alerted last time, and I think I sent to my subscribers as well. Um, <laughs> alert was sent here, right there at 24.51, and then this run here hopefully took some profits. Uh, but natural gas always puts a smile on my face because it's just completely wild uh, <laughs> and poorly predictable. But here, actually, most of the trades would have worked okay. Uh, if you were nimble, I guess, I think I I would have basically uh, entered the blue line. It would have popped in my favor. I just got out of it probably in time. But look at this collapse. It collapsed again into a bear market. So now I would be, oh, okay, let's, let's short it. So I think now I, I would be okay shorting it maybe. Anyway, so uh, if you have any questions, please uh, ask Alex. That's me at MasterChefTrading.com. Please uh, head over to MasterChef Trading. Click on Trade Alert Services. That's MasterChartsTrading.com. Subscribe. Uh, once you subscribe, I will uh, get an email and I will um, share this elite indicators with you, which you know basically I've been using uh, pretty much exclusively of late. So here are those indicators. Um, if you need them, you can also send me a private message on master uh, at mastercharts on uh, tradingview.com. Uh, I'm on a lot of social media. I'm on StockTwits, uh, TradingView, StockTwits, um, StockCharts, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, so yeah, find me there. All right, and don't forget to like the video. Thanks for watching and have another great trading day. Bye-bye.